So Constantine, our principal asset is a, a polymetallic high-grade VMS deposit located in Alaska called the Palmer Project. Um, it's our main focus. It's where we're spending all our energy. It's a real, our real flagship. But I'll just take a minute to talk about some of our other assets. We've got some real quality gold assets in the Timmins camp in Ontario. Um, a basket of, pr of properties there, and uh, we were just able to unlock some value from those recently with a, a sale in January, um, where we sold a, a pretty small portion of our land package to Tahoe for four and a half million cash and a one percent NSR, um, which put us in a nice uh, was definitely a nice addition to the uh, to the balance sheet. So Palmer, it's, uh, we've got an inferred resource. It's 8.1 million tons, 1.4% copper, 5.25% uh, zinc, 31 grams silver, 0.3 grams gold. Um, zinc's pretty popular these days on a zinc equivalency basis. It's uh, about 12.6% zinc. Uh, so it's high grade. It's a quality deposit. Um, and uh, it's got great expansion potential. Um, but we really like its polymetallic nature. It's great to be riding zinc right now, uh, but there's a substantial uh, uh, quantity of copper in this deposit, so it really offers you exposure to both, both, uh, both metals. Um, great metallurgy, great access, uh, great jurisdiction. Um, it's a joint venture. Uh, we had an option agreement with uh, Doha Metals and Mining, their world leader in the uh, zinc business, operate Japan's largest zinc smelter. And they, uh, they had a four-year deal to earn 49% in the property, which they, uh, they earned in in December of 2016. They spent U.S. $22 million. Um, it was a great deal for us, great deal for them. Um, we are 51% owner and operator of the, uh, of the joint venture. And one of the things, in my view, um, that really sets us apart, uh, you know, beyond just the, the quality of the resource and, and the partnership, but it's the district scale opportunity that the project offers, and that's, um, that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. So where we are, we're in southeast Alaska. We're at the north end of the, of the Panhandle, uh, not too far from Juneau. There's two operating mines in the area, the Kensington Gold Mine, uh, operated by Coor, and Greens Creek, operated by Hecla. Greens Creek's a BMS deposit, same type of deposit as, uh, as Palmer, uh, and it happens to be one of the world's richest BMS deposits. Uh, to the north of us is Windy Craggy. It happens to be one of the world's largest BMS deposits. We're in that same age, same belt of rocks, um, so you know, the, those rocks seem to know how to generate real decent deposits and a good place to be looking for more. This is a photo of the, uh, of the project area, the deposits sort of on the left side in the mountain there. Um, really just trying to highlight the access. Um, you know, you think of Alaska, you think remote, remote. We've got a road right to the core of the property. All your paved highway, 60 kilometers door to door to deep sea port of Haines. Um, you know, base metal projects, you produce a concentrate, it's got to get to a smelters. Uh, it's an ideal, uh, ideal scenario. Uh, looking back the other way, up the valley, um, those yellow ovals represent schematically the, where the resource sits in the mountain. Um, we've been able to track it about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way down the mountain. Um, kind of what I wanted to highlight here is this terrain, while it's steep, it's actually a huge advantage for mining. Uh, from a development perspective, you can access the mineralization with lateral development from the valley floor. Um, that means lower upfront capital to develop your mine. And then from a production standpoint, it's actually lower operating costs because you can have an ore pass, you drop your rocks down, and you, you pull it out at the bottom. Uh, it's really quite a favorable situation to have. Um, a little inset there is just, uh, just to show the subdued topography that's, that's right adjacent, so lots of room for developing mill and, and other infrastructure required for, for developing a mine. Um, I'll just take a moment, too, to talk about the, I guess, the land status and permitting. Uh, this area has been selected specifically by the state for its, uh, for its mining potential. Um, land use management plans at all levels, whether it be local or federal, all highlight this region for resource development. And there's actually kind of a unique consensus agreement that was developed by the community to set aside land for resource development, essentially protect it for economy, uh, for resource development and area protective for conservation. So that's a, it's a real good thing to have when you come into an area that you, that you want to uh, explore and eventually develop. This is a cross section uh, through our south wall resource. Um, this is a really well behaved deposit. Uh, really want to, you want to take away from here is it's thick, it's continuous, high grade, uh, some great uh, drill intersections there, and really favorable geometry for, uh, for mining. 
So where are we going now? Um, you know, we formed the joint venture uh, with our partner. We've developed a multi-year plan. It includes this year seven million dollar budget, and it's really a two-pronged attack here. Uh, we've got what we think is the real deal on this deposit. Now we need to systematically go ahead and, and prove that and frame some economics on that. Uh, but in the same token, we've got this district scale land package that we want to go uh, drill and test. Um, and this year is going to be the first time we actually get to kind of step out beyond the fence to go test some of those other prospects that we've been chomping at for, for quite a while. Um, included in the su summer's uh, program is going to be an airborne geophysical survey, MAG EM survey, that should help us with some of that regional targeting. So looking at this, this is just a, a map of showing the, I guess, the prospect area or the property, uh, the yellow stars where the resource is. Um, the red bands define specific stratigraphic horizons where we can track alteration across the hillside and valleys. Um, and that is the mineralized horizon. And within there, we find numerous dozens and dozens of prospects of ore grade or bar mineralization and or barite. Um, there's really about, you know, there's tens of kilometers of, of perspective stratigraphy here to, to trace. And, and very limited amount of it has been, um, has been tested to date. Um, so I just threw this kind of in for fun. We call it our copper zinc triangle. It doesn't have quite the same ring as the golden triangle, but you get the idea. <laughs> So this is a sad image looking down, uh, I guess, on some of the prospects closer to home in terms of closer to our resource. Uh, you can see just the edge of the resource and the top edge of the image. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just quickly walk you through some of these prospects to show you that they're, they're real. This stuff's sticking out of the ground. Um, really exciting looking prospects to, uh, to get after. And, and they're also all linked. So we've, we've you know, been working this for a while and we've got a pretty good geological model here we've developed over the years. So just starting with the cap, this is the one that has seen a little bit of drilling. Uh, one of those holes inter intersected 23 meters of 130 grams silver. Um, the nice exhalative zone there. Uh, it's got some thickness. Uh, we, we, we hope and expect that it'll trend into uh, higher grade base metal mineralization like we've seen at our south wall deposit. Um, this is an area we did some mapping uh, last summer. It's called the Ninotac, some really high grade grab samples and uh, some scattered exposures there. Um, but we're seeing some widths of you know, four to six meters of exhalative mineralization, never been drilled, uh, hardly really been looked at at all. And we, we've, we've developed a nice structural model there and developing some good drill targets on that prospect. Um, he's got a big smile, smile on his face for a reason. Um, Looking at the HD prospects, so up on top, and you know, lots of strike extent of the altered rocks. You can see them there, the, the rusty rocks, and kind of highlighting this one. You know, the black rocks there are. This is actually overturned. Uh, the black rocks are the stratigraphic hanging wall rocks, and then we have the ore horizon, and then we have the altered foot wall. So you can see that, and, and it basically, I'm going to show you on the next slide how we link that between the various prospects. So this is a long section, or sorry, yeah, it's a long a cross section that, that, you know, it's kilometers in scale. Uh, and what you see is on the right side, um, the HG prospect stick, sticking out at the top of the mountain. That was that last photo. And that gray would represent those black rocks. And, and they link up, and the ore horizon links up in a sort of kilometer scale sin form where it comes back out at surface at glacier level. We've got more mineralization. It goes across the glacier, and we see it again. So lots and lots of perspective um, stratigraphy to, uh, to chase here. Um, and uh, as I say, it's in very limited drilling to date. So the overall investment thesis, um, you know, we got a quality deposit and we think we have a camp scale uh, discovery potential on our hands. Um, we're focused on steadily advancing uh, the main resource. We're doing that in partnership with one of the world's leading zinc companies. Um, we're also embarking on our first major property-wide drill program. Uh, with a healthy budget, so should have some good news flow. Uh, Joel's will be on the property the first week of June. Um, you know, on our management team, another thing to highlight, you know, we're, we're really experienced at looking at and targeting these kind of projects and advancing these, these, these types of deposits. Uh, and we're equally disciplined at, uh, I guess, managing the company and our cash flow. Uh, you know, we were actually cash flow positive for the last five years um, through option payments and management fees. We haven't done a financing in five years. Um, We've, uh, we've had over 20 million spent on our project. We've doubled the size of the resource. We just sold some claims for four and a half million bucks. So we kind of know how to preserve and protect our shareholder value. And, and we think we got the real deal here in this project. And I will close on uh, just our share structure and 
performance over the past year. So we're starting to gain some traction, we think, with the zinc market. Uh, in our recent activity here to go out and test some of these other targets, we're starting to see a little bit of joy. Um, 117 million shares outstanding. 126 fully diluted. No financing in five years means zero warrants. Um, and we got a lot of skin in the game. Management and insiders control about 26% of the company. And we're sitting on about uh, five million bucks. Oh, look at that, 19 seconds to spare.